Hi there everyone. If you're watching this, you may be taking part in this month's Maven Data Challenge looking at NYC taxi data between 2017 and 2020. If you're looking for some tips on cleaning over 25 million lines of data in part of query, hopefully you've come to the right place. Initially, when making this recording, I thought I would do it for my own personal reference. Then, as I was recording and editing it, I thought, well, maybe I can share this with others taking part on the challenge. And I thought this could maybe serve two purposes. One, it could help people who were maybe stuck for ideas. And two, see if people have better or more efficient methods on completing the task so that I can learn from that and we can all develop our skill sets together. So if anyone can improve on any of the steps or have some suggestions, please drop a comment. So for the challenges, the main one I see is that we have a crazy amount of over 25 million lines of data. We also have quite a long list of data cleaning requirements. And probably the most difficult one is we, we do have some difficulty in verifying the adequacy of our cleaning. The first thing that we need is a plan. So my plan of attack was the following. One, I would confirm the cleaning steps and align that with our data dictionary terms. And next, I would create a sample data set that includes allowances for all the steps in the cleaning process. And next, number three, I would apply those cleaning steps to the sample data and try and verify to see if we get the desired outcomes. Number four, I would then be able to extract the M code that we use for each step. And then five, we could load up the final full data set and then apply those steps of each code. If you're keen to see how this plays out, stay tuned and I'll walk through the steps of the plan. So first of all, we're going to look at the data cleaning steps. Uh, so first we're going to look at uh, trips that were not sent by store and forward. So we want the store and forward flag is equal to N. So we're going to filter for that. Next, we're only interested in street heel trips paid by car to cash. So that means we want a trip type equal to one, payment type equals one or two, and a rate code ID equal to one. Uh, so we're gonna have to do a couple of filters on that. Next, we're looking to remove any trips before 2017 or after 2020. So this means our pickup date time is between the 1st of January 2017 and the 31st of December 2020. Next, uh, we wanna remove any pickups or drop-offs in unknown zones. We want to look at the location ID for pickup and drop-off. And then we want to change any passenger counts that are zero and replace those with one or also a null with one. And we want to look at a pickup. If the pickup date is after the drop-off date, then we need to swap those around. So we'll have a, have a couple of um, logic functions that we're going to use um, to create a new column and then swap those out again. Uh, for both the drop off and pick up uh, times. Next, we want to remove trips last or lasting longer than a day. So we're going to use the drop off date time and pick up date time and make sure that they're less than 24 hours and we'll remove any that are greater than 24 hours. And then if we have any records where all the fares and surcharges are negative, um, we want to make those positive. So we're going to have to look at multiple criteria here to see if they're less than zero. And if that's the case, we're going to return an initial column that has all negative. And then we'll look to apply some uh, smart replacements uh, to change any values that we have that are negative there. And then the final two set that we have are if the fair amount, we have a fair amount, but our trip distance is zero. We're going to have to put in um, a conditional calculation in there for that. And then also the same if we have a trip distance, but the fair amount is zero, again, we will have a, a calculation to uh, replace some values in there. So those are the steps we're listing out first. Um, so once that's done, we can save those and then apply them to our sample data set, which is coming up next. So what I've done here is create a sample data set of uh, 59 items. Uh, which I've done by de duplicating some of the 2020 items. Um, so what I've done is try to recreate each of the cleaning steps. So we have at least one or two lines in the full 50 uh, line items that 
will filter out once we apply some of our cleaning steps. So we ought to be able to use this as a verification. So for example, here we have some blanks and zero values, or we've changed uh, red codes from one to four or trip types. Um, we also have some negative values in there. We've tried where we have all negative values um, and we have other types of um, uh, values that we've applied here. Zero trip distances and zero fare amounts, payment types of varying degrees and surcharges, etc. I've also amended some of the date times. So uh, we have at least one trip more than 24 hours and a couple where pickup date comes after the drop-off date. Okay, so in order to apply the code to our sample set, so we'll load the set into Power BI the usual way. And we see here we've got our 50 line items. So we move on to the first point, which is the store and flag. We want to filter these so that it's only equal to N. So we just input that there and we hit OK here. And if we look at the M code, we'll see um, what we're getting there. So each store and forward flag equals to N. So that's our first step. So next step, we want to look at trip type. Again, we want to apply a filter. So we're going to apply a filter here again for equals to one. We hit OK again. So that's applied again. We have our M code there saved. So our next uh, step is to look at the payment type. So what we want to do here again is filter for equal to either one or also equal to two as well. So I'll quickly put that in and hit OK. So again, we look at our code. It's saying step and payment type equals one or two. So again, that's another step complete. Fairly straightforward. So next we're going to look at um, filtering this again. So again, it's only equal to one here as well. So that's our red code ID sorted for equal to one. So they were fairly easy to complete those simple filters. So we've got the code, which is common for all of those uh, filters that we've applied there. So next we want to look at the dates. So you want to look at dates um, on the 2017 through to 2020. So we want to go for a between uh, date filter. So we want to go equal to the 1st of December or 1st of January 2017 and the 31st of December 2020. So we select that here and click OK. So that's our pickup date is filtered. And we want to do that for our drop off date and time as well. So we will apply the same uh, filter. So after the 1st of January 2017 and before the 31st of December 2020. We hit OK there. It's another step done. So there's the M code you'll see there. We have the year, the months and the time and then the end is the year, month and time again. Next, we move quickly on to our pickup location ID. Um, so we have some nulls or zeros, so we want to go for a greater than. So greater than or equal to one. So we want to pick up any value that's a numeric value for this. We hit OK. Again, we have a simple filter there. Again, for the drop off location, we are applying the same filter of greater than or equal to one. So that's what we've done there for our pickup and drop off. Now uh, for a passenger count, where we have a null value, we want to replace the nulls or zeros with at least a one. So here we're going to use a replace value. So we're going to look for value of zero and replace it with one. Click OK. So again, that's a fairly simple one. And then next we're going to do the same for nulls. So we click our null, replace it with one. See there, our null disappeared and was replaced with a one. So that's a, a replacement. Uh, so next, we are going to look at the pickup and drop off dates. So we're going to look at a logic function here. So if our pickup date is greater than our drop off date time, 
then we want to return our dropoff div, or else we'll keep our pickup div. So we'll apply that. So that's creating a new column for us. So we have one of our values is replaced there, and then we do the same or a similar type of calculation or uh, rational calculation for our dropoff div. So again, we do an if statement if our dropoff is before our pickup and we want to swap that with our pickup or else we just keep the drop off date click OK so again we get another um, column so we're going to use these columns to replace the old columns so we'll see there that one of the dates was swapped about where we had intentionally uh, where I had intentionally created one so what I've done here is I've just deleting those original columns that we had and then shift across our newly calculated columns where we swapped them about. So next we're going to look at trip duration. So our drop off date time minus our pickup date time. So that's going to give us our duration in a new column. And what we want to do here is filter out any durations greater than 24 hours. So we've done that. And we're about to do that here. So we're looking for a duration less than or equal, less than 24 hours or one day, shall we say. So we can put that time for one day so that will get rid of the one line item or call row that we had that the duration was longer than 24 hours. So next we're going to look at negative charges. So we're going to look at where the fare amount and the various congestion charges and surcharges, if they're all less than zero. And um, we're going to create a new column that's going to tell us if that's a negative value or not. So we're looking here at the fare amount, extras, MTA, tax. What else we got? Improvement surcharge. Less than zero, and I think congestion surcharge here. Yep, congestion surcharge less than zero. So if they're all negative, we're going to say then we want to return a value of all negative. Type that in. Else we're going to say it's OK. So we hit OK here. Can see we've created a column, new column, which will tell us there we've got one line item that we created, but I created intentionally to show negative values. So uh, there we have that. So our next step is we want to replace those negative values with, uh, make them positive. So this is a trick here. So we're going to put in a dummy replacement here. So I'm going to pick a wild value replacing a 5,000 with a 6,000. I'll explain why we've done that in a minute. So that's a dummy replacement calculation that we've got. So what we're going to do here is create a another if statement to change uh, the values to a positive. So we're going to say if the new column uh, value is all negative, then what we want to do is change the fair amount and multiply it by minus one. Else if it's not all negative, then we just keep it as its original fair amount. So we're going to copy that um, formula. I'm going to cancel out of that. So we've saved that formula. So we're going to ca cancel that. So we haven't created a new column here. So what we're going to do here is where we're saying replace 5,000. We're going to say replace, replace each of the uh, values in the fair amount column and we're going to replace that with the calculation that we just uh, wrote out there so for each of those and what you'll find is that replaces the minus 27 with 27 dollars so what in effect is if it's going down each row and doing that calculation and where it comes to an all negative row then it will change that fair amount value from a negative to a positive. So we can do that, repeat that step for each column uh, where we 
had a negative value and it will return a positive. So I've sort of skipped ahead, I've done the, those steps here um, instead of going through the same, same steps for several columns. So next we're going to look at trip distances where they are zero. I'm going to um, create a new uh, custom distance. So again, we're going to create a uh, if statement here. So if the if the trip distance is zero, and the fair amount is greater than zero, then what we want to return is the calculation that we were given uh, by Maven, which is the fair amount. Plus 2.5 divided by 2.5. Now put a couple of brackets around this, or else we just retain the trip distance. So again, we're going to copy that code and cancel that. Yeah. And then we're going to do another replacement. So again, this one a dummy replacement calculation. So again, just a figure that's we know is not in the column, so something large. And again, we replace for each row item, so for each trip distance, we're going to apply that um, if statement. And there, we replace the zero uh, with a new trip distance, so 9.8 miles. So we're going to do the same again for the fair amount, so again, dummy replacement new drill here so we're going to replace the fair amount and we're going to replace that with the other calculation that maven have given us so i've just copied and pasted the same one that i used in the previous column i'm just going through and replacing some of the references and the calculation me one second to type this in. So this will calculate the fair amount for us if that was zero. So just tidying up the final piece of this calculation and then we'll be done with all our steps on this sample set. And then what we can do is save all of our M codes and extract those. So there, the zero we hit, yes. So let's replace the fair amount with 36.7. So that is us done. All set is to load in our full data set, 2017, 18, 19, and 20. Um, here I've already applied all of our steps. So I've copied in the M code and all you need to do is keep adding new steps and applying the code. So here the first one, our store and fly Google's in. We've got trip types, payment types, rate code IDs, pick up dates, drop off dates, etc. etc. So we've applied all the steps um, and this is within our full data set. So again there you see a rate code ID of one have a look at our negative fair calculations so that was creating our new column or no that was applying a factor of minus one on our fair and um, what else we got trip distance so that's the calculation we've done on our trip distances as, as well and if we have a zero fair so we've applied that one as well so that's everything that we needed to do We've been able to quickly apply that. So that's us done. All that's left to do is to save it. So thanks for sticking to the end if you have. If you have any feedback or suggestions on anything, let me know in the comments below. Cheers.